Game time, baby. You already know what time it is. New season, new start. You know what time it is. Let's get it. Welcome to an all new season of the Carl Hager Green and Gold Gridiron Show. I'm Corey LaRange. And I'm Meg Morrison. And wow, do we ever have a great show and a great season ahead for you. And we have some really cool segments that I'm sure you're going to love. But before we get things kicked off, I just want to say a big thank you to all of you guys out there for helping me be a part of this show. It's going to be a great season. And I just hope to be the host that you guys are looking for on the Gridiron Show. So to get things kicked off, uh, we're going to present a whole new segment for you guys. Yeah, I think it's called Don't Mess This Up, New Guy. <laughs> no, maybe not. Now, do you remember during the preseason, there was a lot of hype about the cameras mounted on the quarterback's helmets. Well, that was done in conjunction with the Gridiron Show so that Coach Cavis Reed could see what the players were seeing. Well, we've turned that into a segment for you, and now we're going to strap those cameras onto all different players' helmets so that you get to see the practice from their point of view. You're trying to execute, man. You're trying to um, run the plays and uh, execute at a high level and get your guys, you know, where you want them to be. Wait, wait, no huddle is basically changing the pace of the game. You want to speed things up, try to tire the defense a little bit, but move the ball at, at a high speed. Um, you can go no huddle in two for two different reasons. One is to change the pace. Two is you're behind and you're running out of time and you have to score. So um, it's basically to change the pace of the ball. Go, go. Uh, well, first of all, you have to get the guys aligned properly. Uh, properly and, um, and once you get the snap, just try to execute at a high level. You're still making your reads and um, you're still going through your reg regular progressions, but um, make throws. If you get defense out of position, uh, they miss a line, you have to take take advantage of those opportunities. Uh, we was doing uh, inside run. Um, inside run is where it's just all run plays. We give our O-line chance to um, execute the run where we're actually giving the ball and um, they have to block it up for the running back. So um, it's a drill for the O-line and the quarterbacks and running backs and it helps the D-line and the linebackers out. That drill, I'm, pre I'm pretty much picturing the rest of the offense, um, we may put a route with, with a run play. Um, so I'm picturing looking out there to see what the route is, um, playing a snap in my head as far as where I'm going to throw the ball, but um, executing the, the run game. Trying to see what coverage they're in. Um, you have to key the free safe to see where he's at in the secondary. Um, then you come and get a feel for what the linebackers are doing. But after that, you just go to whatever side you chose um, and just read it out from there. Yeah, you have a pre-snap read and you have a post-snap read. That's how we, we refer to it. Uh, within your cadence, you're looking at the defense, you're scanning. But after you receive the snap, you have to take that picture and see what they're in. And once you see what those guys are in, then you go to the side that you chose. Wow, that was awesome. Meg, did I ever tell you about this one time when I was playing for Austin O'Brien? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Move it on. The, no, I, I got lots of Keep good high school going. stories. Yeah, but there's way better stuff coming up on the show. Yeah, so. well, <laughs> maybe like our next segment, one of my favorites, it's called Cheers. Chelsea B is going to take us through the uh, Eskimo Cheer Team tryouts. I'm Chelsea. This is my first year trying out for the Edmonton Eskimos, and I'm really excited. This week's been pretty crazy. Monday we had tryouts. Wednesday we had the first cut. Thursday we had our interview, so it was just like go, 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 right into it. Sunday, here it is. Like, ah. I haven't even focused on school. I'm not gonna lie to my mom and dad. I'm from Calgary. I've been here for four years and have never left my university bubble. One thing that I really love about the Eskimos is that they go out into the community a lot and they 
do a lot of charity events and they really get the fans engaged, Edmontonians engaged. And another thing is family. I noticed that all the girls are so close and then they're always there for each other and that's one thing that I love about companies and that's what I think the Edmonton Eskimos has. And I really like your hair like that. Thanks. Victoria and I have been dancing together since we were in like eighth grade. We used to do that together and we we're best friends throughout that whole thing and then hopefully I get to dance with her again next year. We danced together uh, back at home and we both moved here for school and I did Eskimos last year and she saw how much fun I had and I talked to her about it and she really wanted to try out. So and we've been practicing together and working on the dances and filming each other and giving each other critiques and stuff. It's scary being a rookie, you don't really know what goes on all the time and like how Eskimos works and everything. So I'll definitely be there to help her with that. I practiced it so many times, I think I practiced it in my sleep. I have the music like in my earphones when I'm sleeping. So hopefully <laughs> I have it memorized. That's kind of my biggest concern is that I'll forget something just due to nerves. But hopefully I'll, I'll give it the best I got and hopefully it goes well. Oh my gosh, it's so nerve wracking. I didn't realize how many people were watching. <laughs> but um, I think good. I just can't wait till the next dance because the next dance is what I'm more, a little bit more worried about because it's longer and more like cheer styles. And I'm a classical contemporary dancer, so cheer is not my style. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm so nervous. <laughs> I'm so happy. I'm so proud of you. Thanks. All this weight is lifted from my shoulder and I can actually like focus on school now. Oh my gosh, so much. I, I wouldn't even be able to tell you. Like listening to the music in my head, listening to this, thinking about math equations, doing that. So much going through my mind, but yay! The Carl Hager Green and Gold Gridiron Show will be back after this. Welcome back to the Carl Hager Green and Gold Gridiron Show. And up next, we have the meat and potatoes of the show. Normally, what we'll do is we'll take a player and we'll expose an unknown hobby of his. Or we'll have him do something he's never done before. Well, this year, we're going to start things off just a little bit differently. Yeah, exactly. And this season, we were granted the ability to shoot some exclusive behind-the-scenes footage of the lead-up to the draft and draft day. So we have uh, Ed Hervey that's going to take us through the entire process. Yeah, I'm the, uh, the head scout uh, for the club, and I also uh, double as the uh, draft coordinator uh, for the football team. And essentially what I do is I gather information. There's many prospects that are out there and I try to do help with the filtering process of these particular players. When it comes down to the, uh, the Canadian draft, and it starts with the East-West Showcase and that is uh, a game where all the coaches at the CIS level uh, proclaim their best players and have them in this uh, week-long practice and all-star game. I would go out there, watch those guys, watch the testing, so we'll have a measuring stick of their athletic ability. When the year finishes, we'll take all the players that we've had on, on our list, and they'll probably be anywhere from 150 to 200 guys that we think can do something, and we'll filter those guys down because the league would like us to send our top 50 players. So once that list is submitted, obviously um, the league will take a tally of those players, and they'll end up inviting uh, 62 to 65 players to the evaluation camp and then we will measure them based on the numbers that they had uh, in May to where they are in, currently in March. Uh, after they do the evaluation camp, uh, we'll watch film, we'll get an idea of who they are, we'll start calling their coaches, start calling their high school coaches, um, we'll fly down occasionally and go see them, we'll interview them, we'll talk to them, we'll do everything we possibly can to know who this player is. They're bringing the big kid from South Florida in for a tryout. Paul's I mean, well known in the business, very experienced because of Paul's connections. And when it comes down to the non-imports that are down in the U.S. and they go to U.S. schools, Paul can pick up the phone and call practically every team in the league and get some sort of information. Here's the thing you need to know about him. He is not a, he's not a blocker and he's not a receiver. And again, for us, it's like, okay, that's good information to know. And Paul's very good at getting that information. Uh, you give Paul 48 hours, uh, he can find out pretty much anything that's needed to be found 
uh, on a player, on a prospect, their chances of making an NFL team or not. Uh, Paul's very valuable to our entire process. So it's, it's on our screen here. Um, I just remember him transferring. Once we get to the month of March and April, we will have broken down every player, and then we'll rank them by position. And then what we do from there is we'll watch them as a group, and then we'll watch them separately again, and then I'll, we'll take, we pair it down to the top five at each position. From there, we'll start to talk about our team's uh, needs, and we'll rank those. And then what we do is we take every team's roster, and we start to look at team's needs. And that's how we judge where we believe uh, teams are going to select. Then what we do is play a team. So we'll, we'll, for example, we'll be BC one day, and then we'll strategize on BC's uh, draft. And then we'll go through the league, entire league, and do it that way. And then we, once we get to our mock draft portion, every person in the room is given a, um, a team. And then what we'll do is we'll have Kavis Reed as the Edmonton Eskimos. He'll decide you know, who he wants. And we, what we try to do is we try to make it extremely hard for him to get the player that he wants. And by that, we start determining who our trade partners are. And then once we're finally, uh, we have the idea of where we are, and once we have each player uh, ready to be ranked, then that's when it gets really good because everyone has a difference of opinion, which is good, which is healthy for de making a de determination for who's the best prospect. Then we say, okay, now the final step is who do we draft in what order? We call that the script. So whenever a situation comes up, as far as the draft or a guy is taken, you look to that list. We believe the team that is the most prepared uh, on draft day is the one that's going to draft the best. All that work that you, you go through from, you know, from last May up until draft day to get your guy it, it makes it that more gratifying. And don't forget to tune in next week and watch our exclusive footage from inside the draft room. Now there's a lot of hard work that goes on behind the scenes and one of those individuals responsible for all that hard work is Mr. Dwayne Veneau, Head of Marketing. Hi, how are you? Very good, how are you? I'm good. But now we're going to talk about some of the upcoming events. You guys have just a crazy season planned for us. And it's going to be really exciting, but let's start off with the season opener. Yeah, so the season opener is this Saturday, obviously, and um, we really wanted to try and, and increase our entertainment value off the field. And, and so um, to kick it all off, it's called a rockin' season opener, and we have Finger Eleven playing halftime, which is really exciting for us. It's a really high-level band, and, and um, you know, we, we do it for a couple of reasons. We want to really entertain the fans, our existing fan base that always comes week in, week out, and also... Um, it, we're hoping it attracts some new fans to us as well. So um, it's going to be a good night and we're excited about it and, and Finger Eleven's excited to come play Commonwealth. Well, and not only do you get to see them once, if you're at the game, which you should be, and you know, it, with all expectations, should be a sellout. But if you can't get in, you have another chance to watch Finger Eleven. Exactly. So one of our, our, our goals this year as well is to sort of go outside the perimeter of the stadium and, and give more things for fans to do. So what we're doing is in... Um, the brand new field house that just officially opened in March is we're having a post-game concert cabaret. So it holds about 2,000 people and Finger Eleven also is going to be playing that. So it's a good old fashioned party with, you know, uh, some round tables and chairs and a stage and a band and, and have a lot of fun after we, you know, kick some butt on Saturday night. Okay, now let's break it down first of all. So Tickets still available for the actual game for the season opener. So how can people get tickets right now for that? For the, so the season opener, the easiest way to go to Ticketmaster, so Ticketmaster.ca. And also you can buy post-game tickets to the Cabaret as well at Ticketmaster.ca. Now there's other places that you can get tickets as well for the Cabaret, right? Yes, yeah, so at the game, if, um, if we're not sold out by then, um, you can um, get tickets right at the Stadium at Gate 2. And that's the closest gate, which is just where we are right now, to, to the field house. So there will be tickets available at the door, but if it, if it sells out, uh, you, got, you better buy early. Now this is a super exciting season because there's a halftime show every single game. And the next one that we have coming up is a little special thing for the ladies. Yeah, well, it, it is for the ladies. It, it is called Ladies Night, but what we're doing is um, we're having a, a $10,000 diamond ring giveaway. And we did this last year at Ladies Night, and we had 50 ladies participate on the, on the field at halftime. So what we're doing this year is it's a bit of a twist. We're having 
um, their husbands or boyfriends participating at halftime and, and they're trying to win the $10,000 diamond ring for their significant other that'll be on the sidelines. So we're having the men work for the ladies that game. Now, are you allowed to compete for this if you work for the Eskimos? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. Oh. But, hmm. sorry about that. And, the, <laughs> and the what we're doing to add a little bit of fun to it is, um, there, you know, love him or hate him, there was a guy on um, The Bachelor, there was a Bachelor in season 14, called, his name is Jake, and he's going to be hosting this halftime show for us. So um, we, we got him because I think he's the only single one left. Yeah, I was yeah. just going to say, if my uh, entertainment news serves me correctly, yeah. I think that he is still single. So <laughs> should be an awesome time. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this with us. And uh, it should be a lot of fun yeah, this weekend. Yeah, thanks. Can't wait. It's going to be fun. This is Peter, that's Jay, I'm Matt, we're Section O, and you're watching the Carl Hager Green and Gold Gridiron Show on Shaw TV. Welcome back to the Carl Hager Green and Gold Gridiron Show. Up next, we have another one of our new segments as we introduce our third team member. Joining our broadcast team this year is Eskimos defensive lineman Rashad Genty with his own segment called 55 with Gent. Good morning, folks. Today is the Canada Day edition of 55 Seconds with Jet, and I'm here with my man Stephen Giles, and I'm going to ask you, Stephen, for some questions, and hopefully you get them right. Okay. First question. Who's the mayor of Edmonton? The mayor of Edmonton. The man who's calling shots. It's a guy named Stephen. I know that. Yeah, so oh, you're right. You're right. right. Stephen Mandel. That's his name. Stephen Mandel. Mandel. Good job, buddy. Uh, what's the capital of Canada? I think Ottawa. Bingo, that's the man. All right, this is a good question because I love this question here. What's your favorite Canadian food? <laughs> what do you like to eat? Oh, my favorite Canadian food. Well, the only food I really recognize as a Canadian food is the, um, the poutine. Poutines! <laughs> Poutines! I haven't had poutines yet, but I gotta try it. You gotta try with the cheese. I gotta try it. Don't just get great with the cheese. This is a hard one. What's, what is what is Canada's official sport? Um, I think rugby. Huh? I would rugby? think hockey, but it's actually lacrosse. Lacrosse? It's lacrosse. Um, it's running the coast. Last one right here. How many provinces are there in Canada? Um, not that many. It's not, 50, it's not 52 like the states, but go ahead. <laughs> um, it's somewhere like 9, 10, somewhere now. You close, who's 10? Okay. Good job, though. Good job. Part Canadian, I'm learning. Part Canadian, are you a Canadian citizen yet? No, not yet. I'm working You've been in the league for what, how many years now? Seven. Are you not a citizen yet? I got a driver's license. All right, close. that'll work, that's close enough. Good job. Thanks a lot, guys, for enjoying, for enjoying this session of the Canadian, the Canada's Day edition of 55 Seconds with Gent. Hope to see you next week. We out. Peace. You just got to love that guy. He's going to be so much fun to have around the team this year. Yeah, absolutely. He is a true Eskimo. And you know what they say, once an Eskimo, always an Eskimo. And that rings true in our next segment called the fifth quarter as we catch up with former Eskimo defensive back and kick returner Emilio Fraeta. I came from O'Leary High School, uh, and then I, uh, from there I played three years. Uh, I also played for St. Joe's for a couple of years. Uh, then I went to the Edmonton Wildcats, which was uh, a very, very good experience for me. Then I spent one year in Northern California called College of the Siskiyous, and then I came back that following year in 79 and uh, made the team. A lot of people don't know that I tried out three times for the Eskimos before I actually made it. I um, uh, was an expert at getting cut. <laughs> Punt returner and a defensive back, yeah, that's, uh, well, yeah, those are some skills that, uh, uh, they just, shall we say, crazy people have. <laughs> Don Sweet kicks the bottom half of Drake up 79 into action. Emilio Freyetta takes it on his nine and blasts his way to the 25, where he nearly loses his head to Jerry Dottilio. My first year, my first great cup, uh, uh, you know what, I, I didn't know how to feel. I mean, I was so ecstatic, I didn't know what it was supposed to be like then. Not only that, is to... Uh, play and see those people that I uh, grew up idolizing like Kepley, you know, Wilkie, uh, all those people and I was in the same dressing room and I'm thinking, wow, this is, you know what, I did not get a, a shot of the Grey Cup 
of any four that I won until the year, uh, two years ago when it was here, and I finally took a great cup picture. I mean, I was in awe of where I was. Emilio Prieta starting out from his own 20-yard line, hit right up the 28-yard line. When you have a championship team, uh, you need the role players, you need specialty players, uh, you need guys that do the little things that aren't very visible. When we played, uh, special team wasn't a very big emphasis because we had such a, a good skilled group of people so that uh, actually he would say to me, he says, we don't need any penalties or anything, we don't need any big yards, it's just catch the ball. Says we have every, everyone else can do their job and we get accomplished it and win this way. So it was a good uh, thing to know that you know, even those little things that you were doing, somebody was looking at them as, uh, as part of the formula and make sure to win. To be a professional athlete, and especially in that environment there, where we mostly won, it was the happiest years of uh, my life. Been fortunate enough for, to own my uh, couple of businesses. Uh, one was a cafe in the, the center, the other one was a construction company, but that took a lot of my time. Uh, right now I'm working for Atco Gas. It's somewhat like the Eskimos uh, in a sense that they're uh, very visible in the community. We do a lot of uh, events and we raise funds for uh, various charities. This is one of the better jobs that I've had, excluding football, mind you, uh, <laughs> that I've had in my, in my life. If I had to be remembered for one thing is to be uh, the fun, likable, lovable, practical joke guy that tries to make everyone laugh and tries to make everybody feel good about themselves. The Carl Hager Green and Gold Gridiron Show will be back after this. Welcome back to the Carl Hager Green and Gold Gridiron Show. And you know, I always love watching the games on TV, but there's nothing quite like being in this building and experiencing it for yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And even when you are at Commonwealth Stadium, I mean, my season seats for years have been in upper section R where the air is thin and you almost need to wear the <laughs> headphones to know what's going on on the field. You can't quite see the players individually, but to be right on the sidelines and to hear and feel exactly what's going on uh, with the team, that's exactly what we're going to present to you in our next segment, Sounds of the Game. Old people are so very wise. So very wise. As a little child, my grandfather used to consistently say, you can't unring a bell. You can't unring a bell. My little mind couldn't comprehend, but as I grew older, I started to realize what he was saying. Every moment of your life counts. Every moment of your life defines who you are. And once it's done, it's done. That bell has rung. You're part of a special franchise, a special team. You're part of a family right now. That jersey you wear, wear right now defines this franchise defines you in this moment. You're part of a rich tradition, a tradition of excellence. You're part of a tradition that says winning is necessary. Ring their bell, make it a sound that you're going to be crystal clear that 2012 is the year of green and gold. Let's go get them. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go get them. Let's go get them. Game time, baby. We already know what time it is. New season, new start. No time it is. Let's get it. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Let's go. What's 
up, Giz? I got the backflip. I'll let you have the front flip. <laughs> Well, that's a wrap on our first show. Good job, Meg. Yeah, good job, buddy. Yeah, it was fun. It was. So remember to watch us every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. on Shot TV. That's channel 10. Or if you'd rather catch us online, just go to esks.com or shottv.ca. And please check out our Facebook page or tweet us as well at The Gridiron Show. Now, our first show might be done, but the Esks first show is about to start. It's the return of Ricky Ray and the Toronto Argonauts this Saturday at 5 o'clock. Show the boatman that you're green and gold to the core while enjoying a great cabaret. Yeah, and if you can't make it down to the stadium, just listen to the voice of the Eskimos, 630 Ched, or check out your Shaw HD listings as well. So that's a wrap on our first show at the Carl Hager Green and Gold Gridiron Show. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. We'll race you to the finish line. Whoa. <laughs> I'm coming. I'm coming. Ah. <laughs> the Carl Hager Green and Gold Gridiron Show is brought to you by Carl Hager Lemon Brace, custom designed braces and foot orthotics manufactured in Edmonton. Right. Does his face look good to you now? It looks different than over there. It's perfect. All right. Perfect. Muscle says perfect. <laughs> All right, baby, come on, we got to go for it. You got it, yeah. It's still early, baby. Hello, everyone, and welcome to... Sorry? What? Oh, wow! <laughs> that was amazing! Dude, that was incredible! I'm trying to keep my foot on my pages. Back on your mark. The pebbles come off. <laughs>